scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's stretch our hands and just bless the worship team for such a phenomenal, phenomenal ministration. Just stretch your hands towards them. Lord bless them. The Bible says, he that waters shall be watered himself. Is someone blessing them? Bless them from the depth of your heart. Lord, it is from glory to glory. From grace to grace. Increase their ministries, multiply them, prosper them as they serve. Let the nations see you revealed in their lives. May they be so greatly rewarded for serving you. In the name of Jesus. Now pray for yourself tonight. I have come to receive. I open up my heart to receive. Someone pray. I have come to receive even by the Spirit. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. All right, while standing, I want us to just pray together. Um, we declared a fast today, and I presume that everyone followed. We had two prayer points, and I want us to just pray those prayer points into our spirits. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. We are still standing. Acts 4:31. The Bible says, and when they had prayed, not before, not during, when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And the Bible says they were all, how many? All. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. We're praying that the Lord will increase our capacity Hallelujah. The problem with the woman who was in debt was not the availability of the oil. It was the size of the vessel. Hallelujah. And the prophet gave her a recommendation. He said, the oil will always reflect your capacity. He says, go and borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. Hallelujah. Jude 1 and 20 says, but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So as we engage in effectual prayer, we're expanding our capacity, capacity to receive, capacity to deliver. Are you ready to pray? Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Louder, in the name of Jesus. I contend for greater capacity and higher levels of spiritual power as I submit myself to fervent effectual prayer open your mouth and begin to pray Lord as I submit myself to prayer let there be an enlargement in my spirit someone pray 
an enlargement, an enlargement, an enlargement, increase in capacity. Shabakatoska fraska tebelekete parakatosha frandeke tebeletos. The Bible says the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous man availed much. Are you praying? Kaparos kate brandeke balakosha fraska tebeleketos. I contend for greater capacity, higher levels of power, higher levels of unction, higher levels of grace. Grace can be multiplied, peace can be multiplied, men can expand from within their spirit. Ebra tekev kaskade beleke to shakratis kapere tusiata. Capacity in the spirit. Capacity in the spirit. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. When you place a cup on a table like this and you decide to pour one drum of water into that cup, you are going to waste every other thing that you have poured in minus the size of the cup. Am I right on that? Yes. The moment the cup gets filled, every other thing you are pouring will be a waste. Hallelujah. Yes. So, if you want to receive the more, and like you'll be learning, there are many things that cannot be captured in your life except and unless on the strength of your capacity. God cannot trust you with certain instructions. God cannot trust you with certain dimensions. God cannot even trust you with men until this wonderful structure that we're in right now, if the architects would tell you the size of the foundation, the foundation was so constructed to be able to receive this size. Am I right on that? Now, there are times that architects have made mistakes for whatever reason and they did not pay attention to the foundation and they kept adding structures on a foundation that was not supposed to host that kind of building and as a result you will find out that regardless what they did as far as the quality of the construction is concerned it will eventually collapse god trust me with higher levels of wealth higher levels of grace that cannot happen except and unless you build capacity we're going to pray one more time this prayer holds the key to many people's desire it's not like god does not want to reach down to you but your capacity is very small and has remained so as a man of god you're trusting god to expand your ministry god loves you but he loves those you want him to send you to you and because your capacity is small, you will not be able to do much. Are we together? One more time, cry. Greater capacity. Enlarged capacity in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. For in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to pray the second prayer point. In Acts chapter 13 and verse 2, Acts 13 verse 2, the Bible says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Paul, for the work I have called them into. If they did not submit themselves to prayer and fasting, they would not even know that there was an assignment for them. Hallelujah. We are praying that God would download the prophetic blueprint for the next season of your life. Are we together? Listen to me. Delay is related to confusion. The moment there is clarity, there is speed. Are we together? If you are driving somewhere and you are not sure where to turn to, the first thing you do is reduce your speed so that you do not pass the place. 
I say it again, delay is related to confusion. You're going to pray, Lord, the prophetic blueprint for my life in this season, I receive it by the Spirit. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. The prophetic blueprint for the next level of my life, the prophetic blueprint, Shake parus kate brende gebeleketosh, krakata paraku segete belekosia. The prophetic blueprint for the next level of your ministry, the next level of your impact. Yesterday's instruction may not suffice for today. Your ears must be inclined to hear what he's saying today. Peba shabarako safras kadebe legete kotas rabakata parandos kadebe lekos yata. Alleluia, alleluia. First Corinthians chapter two from verse nine and ten. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Verse 10, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. Is that in your Bible? It says, for the spirit searcheth all things. How many things does he search? All things. He does not search some. He has the exclusive ability to search the mind of the Father, even the deep things of God the deep things of God. You are going to pray, Holy Spirit, bring to my life the detail for the next level of my life. Bring to my life the details. What do I need to do? Where do I need to go to? Who do I need to meet for the next level of my destiny to be opened? Go ahead and pray. Confusion recycles pain. Action in ignorance will only multiply your pain and waste your energy. The Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. He said, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Is someone praying? The prophetic blueprint for the next level of my life. For the next level of my life. The prophetic blueprint for the next level of my business. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. It is dangerous for a new season to come upon you and then you do not know how to respond to it. The Bible is full of men and women who excelled within their current seasons but they did not know how to navigate the next season. An example of such persons was the man called Gehazi. Gehazi was a great man who served sincerely. Perhaps he would have been the one to receive Elisha's mantle. But he did not know that the season that was coming upon him demanded that he would have to conquer his love for money and to follow the prophet carefully. And because of a morsel of meat, he destroyed himself. Another person who made that mistake, as you read in the Bible, was the context between Jacob and Esau. That he sold his birthright for a pottage of soup, of stew. Hallelujah. It's important that we discern seasons like the sons of Issachar and that we know what to do per season. Help us tonight, O oh God, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please be seated. You're welcome to the presence of God. Welcome to Koinonia. We welcome all who are connected online. The Lord will do you good tonight in Jesus' name. First Timothy chapter 3, chapter 2, from verse 3 and 4. 
first timothy 2 3 and 4 the bible says for this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior verse 4 who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth please keep that scripture there the Bible says that God has a burning desire in his heart for all men. And that desire is number one, that all men be saved. It is a desire very clearly written in scripture that God will have all men to be saved. That means whoever participates in making contributions towards the salvation of men is satisfying a desire and a longing in the heart of God who will have all men to be saved that is on one hand and then for those who are now saved to come on to the knowledge of the truth there are people who are saved but in ignorance they will not do much not for themselves not for the kingdom I have taught you that this kingdom is a kingdom that operates on the strength of light the strength of knowledge you can be saved. Salvation opens you up to the vast potentials that are captured in this Zoe life. But walking in the experience of it is knowledge dependent. Hallelujah. So, potentially speaking, the life we have received is a multifaceted um, expression of all the possibilities that are in Christ. But they will never find expression in my life and your life except and unless we have the requisite level of knowledge and you see knowledge in this kingdom is not freelanced it has to be methodical it has to be constructive are we together part knowledge here another part here a little you know misguided information here will not add up to an excelling life you need to submit yourself to the whole counsel of God. That line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, you are learning the ways of God until you become mighty like the men of David. May that be your testimony. In the name of Jesus. Is someone shouting a louder amen? amen. And one of the reasons why we were given the Holy Ghost is to help us the Holy Spirit is our guarantee that we can step into the fullness of the knowledge it takes to reveal Jesus through our lives and to excel. First Corinthians 2, we read verse 9 and 10. Let's look at 11 and 12. The Bible says, verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? It says, Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Let's read verse 12 together. One to read. It says, Now we have received, uh -huh, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So one of the major assignments of the Holy Spirit is to come to us and become to us the revealer of the ways of God, the revealer of the mysteries of the kingdom, the revealer of the secrets of God, the revealer of the path that leads to an excelling life, a life of victory here and now. You can waste the ministry of the Spirit by just believing He's in your life just to make you feel spiritual and not maximize the potential. Most people are underutilizing the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They will tell you they are filled with the Holy Ghost. They will pray in tongues, but their lives are surrounded by all kinds of foolish decisions and it is clear that the Holy Spirit has no hand in that kind of life of decadence and perpetual decline because when the Holy Spirit comes, he truly makes you a winner. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? You can give me a phone or you can even give me some money and I can sit back there and not maximize those privileges either because of ignorance or whatever it is. Now that does not stop the fact that you gave me something that has the potential to bless, to lift. 
but whether I can use it to my advantage or not is a different thing altogether so most people have received the Holy Spirit and we just end at the realm of feeling spiritual oh I have the Holy Ghost I can even pray in tongues to prove it but we cannot see the benefit of his person in your life there should be a remarkable difference please look up the former you the current you and the future you should be clearly different as proof that the Holy Spirit has come to assist you are we together did the Bible not say two are better than one that means my life alone without his assistance now that he has come into my life your life should not be the same at all our precious people sang it very powerfully the Holy Spirit is that engracing that comes from God the added advantage the advantage when he comes upon your life your background no longer matters when he comes upon your life the limitations past do not matter again I hope you believe this this is very powerful everywhere that I go everything that I do all I see is great Everywhere that I go, everything that I do. Your life becomes a living epistle. Your life becomes a discussion unto the glory of God. That when people look at your life, they know that a normal human being unassisted by heaven, unassisted by the realm of the spirit, cannot produce this kind of result Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night in John chapter 3 and verse 1 and he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God verse 2 says for no man can do these things except God be with him there are results that cannot happen just by the strength of the flesh hallelujah I'm praying for you that from tonight, the excellency of your results will clearly show that God is with you. But not just that he's with you, that he's truly the one leading you. It is all right for people to not believe you when you say God is leading me. But the end of your journey will show that he's the one who led you to Abuja. That he's the one who brought you here. That he's the one helping you understand his ways. In the name of Jesus Christ and up front let me encourage someone look up please it takes time for the excellency of the spirit life to manifest be patient God is working we live in a world where we want rush everything you know and you just want I'm born again filled with the Holy Ghost what do I need to know I want to start seeing results immediately be patient only a foolish farmer will go and put a seed on the ground are we together and by the next day he goes back there and he's angry at the farm I thought you are supposed to be a you know well fertilized farm you be patient sometimes you just need to do what you are doing you don't need to do anything new just be consistent it says let us not be weary in well-doing for we will reap in due season if we faint not we will reap in due season Yours is to continue the prayer, continue the word study, continue submitting yourself to growth. One day, like a baby transiting into a teenager, there are things that begin to happen in your life that tells you that a season is changing. Am I right on that? Yes. What does a baby do to become a higher version of itself? What does a young boy do to become a teenager? What does a teenager do to become an adolescent? What does an adolescent do to become an adult? What does an adult do to become an elderly person? That is the law of growth. Consistency is what is common to all of them. If a baby takes one drum of breast milk, it does not turn him into an adult. He just becomes a healthy baby. He will still be a baby. If an adult starves himself to death, he does not become a child. He only becomes a malnourished adult. There are certain things that subscribe to the law of process. Yours is to continue. It may not look like it, but the Bible says, now are we the sons of God. It says it does not yet appear. 
from that one room keep loving Jesus from that one room keep serving Jesus from that one room let your mind keep dreaming with the spirit sooner or later you will turn back and look for your former self and not find it again did the Bible not say why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal subject to change but the things that are unseen are eternal hallelujah so be patient with yourself don't allow the devil who is the master of the sense realm to make you feel this pursuit of God, this investment in prayer, this investment in the study of God's word, this giving, all of these practices, they don't seem to be yielding result. Till now, I do not have a job. Till now, I do not have this and that. Make up your mind that you will weary that voice of doubt and remain consistent, knowing that God has sworn by the oath and the promise that by these two immutable things, hear me, it is impossible for God to lie. And the way the realm of the spirit works is even 24 hours to your new season, it will not look like it. One more bath to turn a man to become a complete man, he was still looking leprous. One more night for the prisoner to become a prime minister, he was still looking like an ordinary person. The same way someone is seated here. Who knows, maybe this is your last night in that realm. Who knows, maybe this is your last night in that dimension. You will wake up and through the law of consistency, you would have evolved to a dimension of you that will become a marvel to the world. I speak it to someone in the name of Jesus Christ. The staying power, the grace to stay and to remain until you evolve. The grace to stay and remain until the world works in your life. The grace to stay and remain. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. It is not in starting, even failure start. It is champions that remain until they finish. When you watch a marathon, all kinds of people are there ready to start. Even those who already know, they will not finish. And once they shoot the gun or blow the whistle, everyone is running. And some are just whiling away time whereas you can see some people you can almost suspect that they will be the winners because their determination is so palpable you will know that from the start they were prepared to weary tiredness until they got to the finish line may you be that kind of person <laughs> refuse to give up every time you are tempted to give up listen remember all those who are connected to your destiny Every time you're tempted to give up, remember the fact that God is counting on you to be the person who will end certain circles and let that motivate you and support your staying power to remain until you emerge. But one guarantee I can give you by the integrity of scripture is that nobody who submits himself to the ministry of the word, the ministry of prayer, you are methodically taught the ways of God alongside the engracing that empowers you to walk in keeping with what you know. It is impossible to remain a failure. We are not the first to do this. This is not an invention. It's a relay. Others ran this race with excellence and they handed the baton to us. The Bible says, listen carefully, to follow them who through faith and patience. You're not the first to rise from failure to success. You're not the first to receive restoration from a, you know, whatever it is. Everything that is happening to you now is only a repetition of something that has happened before. The Bible says the thing that was is the thing that it is, that is and is that which is to come. We learn scripture because we find our experiences in scripture alongside the pathway that leads us to victory. It says, now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph hallelujah are you blessed already journey with me tonight tonight we are going to the school of power there are things that God wants to open our eyes to see there are things that God wants to plant within our spirits and 
I owe you to teach you these mysteries, the mysteries that control the understanding and the administration of spiritual power. Now, respectfully speaking, there are so many people who talk about power. People have written books about power. But it's very clear that there are very few people, very few people who genuinely understand power alongside the systems of administering it. I'm hoping that this teaching tonight will truly bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me set two foundations very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Two foundations very, very quickly. Number one, please write. The first foundation that I want you to get tonight is that God is the all-powerful God. This looks very simple, but please write. God is the all-powerful God. We're in the school of power tonight. God is the all-powerful God. Not one of them, not the most senior. God is the all-powerful God. He's called El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. It's a picture of one who has infinite ability and supplies. Are we together? Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. So the first foundation tonight is that God is the all-powerful God. It says, Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. Please say, by thy great power. It took great power to make the heavens and the earth. It was not just suggestion. It was beyond sincerity. If he was God indeed, he had to prove it by exerting great power to make the heavens and the earth. It says, and thy outstretched arm, and there is nothing on account of your track record. We know for a shorty that there is nothing too hard for thee. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Second scripture to buttress on this point is Psalm 62 and verse 11. Popular scripture here. Psalm 62 and 11. God had spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Someone say, power belongs to God. Power. One more time. Say, power belongs to God. So every time you see the manifestation of power across this realm, across the earth, it tells you that there is a God factor that has been introduced within that system, even if manipulated. The Bible testifies that power resides with God, that everywhere you see the manifestation of power, no matter what name you call it, that that power came from God, whether it was manipulated, as you'll be learning tonight, all power belongs to God. God does not depend on any deity to get power. If he did, he would no longer be God. Are we together? One of, there are three attributes for your knowledge. There are three attributes of God that he did not share with man. Please look up. The Bible tells us that we were made in the image and the likeness of God. What does that mean? The image of God is a spiritual, the spiritual quality. The image of God made in Christ. Are we together? the glory of God but the likeness of God means his functionality we were made to function like God two hands one head are we together now yes and we function by speaking we function by doing so the Bible says man was made in the image of God and in the likeness of God this is very important God gave man everything the Bible lets us know that we are partakers of his divine nature do you believe that However, there are three attributes of God he did not share with man. Listen carefully. There are three attributes of God that he did not share with man. These are the attributes that brand God and put him in a class all by himself. For your knowledge, just write it down quickly. Number one is called his omnipotence or omnipresence. Let's start with omnipresence omnipresence what does that mean his ability to be everywhere at the same time the bible calls him alpha it calls him omega the expression and was not in the original translation alpha omega what does that mean it means that god does not need to move forward to know what the end will be 
Are we together? There is no time lag with him. He's at the beginning and at the same time he's at the end. This is an attribute of God he did not share with man. The psalmist said it this way, where can I hide from your presence? Omnipresence. God is everywhere at the same time. None of us, no matter how, even if we contend, we get into that Philip dimension, we cannot be everywhere at the same time. Even Jesus, when he wore a mortal body and became flesh, he could not be everywhere at the same time. Jesus would say, let us go to the other side. That means let's leave where we are now and then move to the other side when he was going to Gadara. But God can be everywhere at the same time. It's interesting that he's here in this place and he's there with someone in a church somewhere, in a crusade ground somewhere, and it's the same God. Number two, he's omnipresent or omnipotence. Omnipotence. That is the second attribute of God. What does it mean? Potent means powerful, all powerful. God does not outsource power from the external environment god does not outsource power i hope you know that every other being every other entity on earth listen the law of power also goes hand in glove with the law of authority that means anybody you see manifesting power must be able to show where he received it from because the only person who does not receive power is god are we together now but every other being, ye shall receive power. Are we together now? This is very important. When it comes to God, he did not outsource his power. If he outsourced his power, then whoever or whatever gave him that power must then be the God. Omnipotent. Number three is omniscient. Omniscient. Others will say omniscience, omniscient. That means all-knowing. These are the three attributes of God he did not share with man. Omniscient. God knows all things. God is not learning. He does not learn. When Jesus came and walked in the flesh, he had to learn the law. But God in his capacity as God does not learn. God does not have anybody who teaches him or grants him mentorship. He knows all things. Are we together? We have to depend on the Holy Spirit for our knowledge. But God is all-knowing. 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 We see in part, the Bible says, and we prophesy in part. But we're talking about the God that knows everything. If he is everywhere, then it makes sense for him to know everything. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. All right, so back to our foundation. We're laying a very strong foundation that God is the all-powerful God. This is very important. Find a way of believing that in truth, whether you have seen his power manifest to the degree that satisfies you or not, believe by faith that God is all-powerful. Number two, the second foundation that I want to lay tonight in our discussion is that God desires for his power to be revealed in the lives of his people. God desires for his power to be revealed in the lives of his people. He's not only the all-powerful God, but there is a yearning in his heart that his power be made manifest in the midst of his people. Psalm 107 verse 21. Psalm 107 verse 21. Here's what it says. Oh, that men would praise the Lord, it says, for his goodness and for his wonderful works. Where? To the children of men. Men will praise him because they have seen in experience his goodness and his wonderful works. In Zephaniah 3, 17, Zephaniah 3 and verse 17, it says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Not just the Lord seated on a throne. Are we together? The Lord who has come to be made manifest is mighty. 
He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He, he will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. The Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. Hallelujah. So these two foundations are very important for our discussion tonight. That God is the all-powerful God. But then that number two, God desires his power to be revealed in my life and your life. If you can settle on that, then you'll be ready to learn everything as far as the dynamics of power is concerned. If you still have a restraint in your thinking, whether or not God wants his power to be made manifest, chances are excellent that you will not be open to receive. Are we together? What is power? Let me define for you the power of God. In fact, power generally. Please write. I have two definitions here or three that I want you to please put down. Number one, power is the ability slash capacity to do or to influence outcomes. Power is the ability slash capacity to do or to influence outcomes. The ability to influence outcomes is called power. The ability to do, the ability to influence outcomes, all kinds of outcomes, human outcomes, circumstantial outcomes, spiritual outcomes, financial outcomes, the ability to do and the ability to influence outcomes is called power. Do you understand that definition? That means if someone comes here now who say for instance is sick and I can exert an energy and influence upon that person and that person instantly becomes healed. There was an agency, am I right on that? That functioned like a drug into that person's body that corrected that anomaly we call that power everywhere you see outcomes influenced to line up with the will of god and to line up in such a way that it it makes the saints to be victorious that there right there is the manifestation of the power of god what turns a man from poverty to wealth is power. What turns a man from defeat to an excelling life is power. What subdues principalities, witches and wizards and causes an individual regardless your background to emerge is power. One more time, power is defined as the ability or capacity to do the ability to influence outcomes. Number two, I define power as the force that compels compliance. Power is the force that compels compliance. Very powerful definition. The force that compels compliance. You can put in bracket obedience. The force that compels compliance. The capacity to influence outcomes and the force that compels compliance that means everywhere power is available you know the presence of power by the manifestation of obedience are we together everywhere there is power there must be obedience to the will and the dictates of the person manifesting the power when you see lawlessness and you see disobedience, it's a sign that power is not present or that power is not being executed accurately. Am I right on that? Yes, sir. Write this down, please. Every result, and listen carefully, every result in life and in the kingdom is attributed to power. Every result prosperity increase great children a great marital destiny great ministry abundance increase spiritually every result in life and in the kingdom is attributed to power every result 
when you see results in the kingdom in any variety of its expressions i am telling you that at the back of every result is the manifestation of power now whether that power is positively used or not is something else we are going to discuss watch this that also includes a herbalist who will tell someone come i want to prosper you go and bring a goat go and bring a chicken and it does some incantations and mixes all of those things and tells the person go and by the time he gets to the office they promote him twice in one month and you are wondering that there is power being manifested whether it glorifies god or not is something else we're going to discuss but we're settling the fact that every time you see the ability to manipulate outcomes to your advantage it is called power i hope you know that the hallmark of dominion is not knowledge the hallmark of dominion is power what you know is useless if it cannot manipulate the outcomes of your destiny please listen carefully the hallmark of dominion is not knowledge the hallmark of dominion is power if you are walking in dominion in truth it must be demonstrated by your ability to select the possibilities that come into your life or the possibilities that remain in your life if you do not have that ability to edit the happenings in your life and only allow those that are consistent with the will of God to find expression what is missing in your life is power is someone learning already the ability to compel compliance I said every result in life and in the kingdom is attributed to power no wonder we look at people and we say this man is powerful when you see a wealthy man who is excelling you say wow this man is so powerful whenever you see men and women manifest um, extra supernatural or extra human abilities accomplish certain feats we usually will attribute them more to power than even it is to knowledge hallelujah i don't know how i stumbled across a video one time online where i think it's they slap themselves that's the the, the and it, it caught my attention and i said what in the world is going on here I mean literally competition with people who come and then this guy will slap this guy if you are able to stand that slap then you now your turn they slap you back I, I i don't of course everybody has a right to whatever it is that they believe but i found that amusing and then one of the guys who was purported to be a world champion it was now his turn to slap the other guy and with the determination of a wheeler he slapped that gentleman and i think the person passed out or, <laughs> or collapsed and i said that right there is power <laughs> to manipulate an outcome to reflect your desire are we together yes many believers are stranded in life and destiny because they do not understand the dynamics of power they do not understand how to access it they did not they do not even understand how it works nor how to release and to dispense it and listen to me your christian experience will be in a sorry state if you do not understand the dynamics of power and how to make it manifest respectfully speaking there are preachers struggling in ministry because they do not understand how the power of god works there are individuals struggling across several areas of their lives because they do not know that the power of god is the privilege of all the saints look at me please when we talk of power especially in the kingdom i think subliminally we have been programmed to imagine that the power of god is the exclusive reserve for preachers apostles and prophets so when we say power immediately 
your mind goes to an apostle, some prophet, some evangelist, some teacher, and then once you do not feel called into the fivefold ministry, we usually close our hearts to power and would gladly have to depend on the vessels we perceive to have power for us to partake of that power. But I am telling you that when it has to do with the power of God, he desires that all men, power is in several degrees, Power is in several dimensions. We are not necessarily discussing that tonight. Are we together now? But just for you to know that once you are in Christ, it is your heritage and your privilege as, as a result of that which Christ has done to access, to walk in, and to manifest in experience the power of God. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Psalm 66 and verse 3. It says, Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you submission is a product of power when it has to do with elemental forces when it has to do with the realm of the spirit many people have heard the saying that the only language satan understands is power i believe that it takes the power of God to subdue principalities and powers. It takes the power of God to manipulate circumstances and situations to reflect glory, to reflect grace. This is our mandate to bring everything to the obedience of Christ in experience. Hallelujah. Did the Bible not say it in, um, that should be Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. To the intent it says, that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Chapter 2 and verse 10 says, We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. And all of this will require power. More than desire, you will require power. Please listen to me. My brother, my sister, it will take power to rewrite the narratives, the negative narratives in your family. It will take power to force your portion to come to you and to remain with you. The Bible says strong men return, retain wealth. Wise men bring wealth, but strong men retain wealth. Are we together now? It takes power to compel your portion right from the days of john up until now the kingdom suffered violence it says the violence shall take it by force there is nothing that god desires to come into your life that will just come in cheaply satan will not allow that he is a master at rebellion he is a stubborn spirit stubborn from the foundations of the earth and he will not allow anything including your portion to come to you without a contest not even salvation came at a platter of gold to us the recipients we got it freely but to him who paid that price he paid the price with his blood his reputation even his death if your life is going to change it will take power man of god if you must rise in ministry and excel it is going to take power it takes power to stop the devil from destroying your children and planting all kinds of negative and demonic seeds in them. It takes power. It takes power to ward off the antagonisms of men that plague our world and still continue to excel in spite of Satan, in spite of negative situations and circumstances. Someone say power. Let the devil hear you. Power. Now, pay attention. Very briefly, let me just share. This is not, there is something I want us to touch tonight before we pray. But the power of God, listen carefully. The power of God operates exclusively by faith. The power of God at work in the believer operates exclusively by faith that means power is faith dependent now for a long time um 
I think across the body of Christ, there seems to have been an age-long confusion as to the role of the power of God versus the role of faith. And so erroneously, we've had people who are supposedly the power people, especially the charismatics. We are the people of power, the people of the spirit, and they downplay the place of faith. And then respectfully speaking, we have those who believe in faith as it were, and do not seem to place any regard to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. There is nowhere in the Bible where believers are taught to dichotomize faith and then the ministry of the Holy Spirit or to choose one against the other. It is an unfortunate miscommunication of women and women of God. And I know that everybody is doing their best, but speaking from a standpoint of scriptural accuracy, listen, faith and the power of God work hand in glove. The assignment of faith is to connect you to the power of God. Are we together? When you say faith has brought you the victory, you are right. But the dynamics of that operation is that your faith connects you to the power of God. It is the power of God that is the force that actually produces the results. Are we together? Yeah. Imagine with me for a moment that you bought a nice gadget, say a fridge. Please look up. Walk with your minds now. So we have here a fridge. Are we together? Beautiful fridge that you bought from whatever, you know, where appliances are bought. And you have this fridge. It has the potential to cool anything. Your soft drinks, whatever you put in there. But did you know that there is usually a socket on your wall? Am I, am I, am I right on that? That is connected to the power holding company. Now, that fridge can remain there for eternity, even though brand new. You will never be able to experience the potential. I hope you know that if you just put your tomato or your drinks there, it's going to rot and spoil there. Does that mean the fridge cannot cool? It can, but now it's not connected to power. Does that even mean that the power holding company has not released power? There's power, but your connection. Are we together? And sometimes, how many of you know that the wire from your fridge to the wall may be too short sometimes. Am I right on that? And you may need to add to the wire to elongate it. Your assignment is that by all means, it gets to connect there. That long wire you see is what we call faith. The assignment of faith is to be a conduit for the power of God to flow. So when you say the wire is the reason why the fridge is on, you are not wrong, but classically speaking, there is power that flows through that wire. Am I right on that? Electricity, you call it. That is what really powers it. So as much as the power is available to power your fridge, if the wire that is connected is too small, you will need to elongate it. This is the dynamics of faith and the power of God. So imagine someone who says, I don't need the power in the wall there. All I need is to have a long wire. You can go and buy, you know, measure wires and buy it and even hang some on your shoulder. Now, there's no doubt that you have a lot of wire, but will the fridge still be cold? Then assume the person who keeps jumping and using a tester to say, look, I can guarantee you there is light there. The power holding company has released light. Will the fridge still be on? There has to be a synergy. Am I right on that? A combination between the socket and the power that is released there and then your wire that connects you. So faith connects you to the power of God, but it is the power of God that actually brings the results. Are you learning now? So if all you have is power, congratulations, but you are about to watch from a distance and be frustrated while you watch because it will take faith to transport that reality. So when the Bible says things like, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith, he's talking about your conviction that now has given you room to take action and in taking your action you have now committed the power of god to flow hallelujah but it's important for you to know that the administration of the power of god is faith dependent what does that mean that means that administering the power of god is a product of conviction and obedience you're not going to independently or arbitrarily manifest genuine power. 
All kinds of power, even manipulated power, depends on conviction and obedience. If you go on, for instance, not, not to praise or glorify the devil, but just because of our discussion. Imagine with me that you were not saved back in our days, traditional practices, and you now went to some herbalist somewhere and said, Sir, I want my crops to produce maximally this year. Watch what you will do. He will say, so, so this is what you want? Yes, sir. I want to have a bumper harvest. He will laugh because that possibility exists in the spirit. Are we together? And then, based on his experience or his level of consecration or his ability to access familiar spirit, he will come up with a formula that controls what you are looking for. Am I, am I, am I right on that? When he consults with those mediums, they will now tell him what must be combined to produce that outcome you're looking for. So he will now give you the list. Go and bring a black goat, for instance. Go and bring one bag of beans or whatever it is. Go and bring this and that. Add 50,000 naira to it and then write the names of everybody who will be farming there and now you may not know what you are doing remember all you want is the outcome but number one your conviction number two your obedience you will now go and get all those things and bring it and say i've now brought it and he will conjure those things and say a lot of nonsense and gibberish that you don't care about while he's saying and once he will mix all of that thing he may give you something or he may say go and to your shock and wonder you will be surprised that your farm will start obeying you in a certain way. Hmm. Am I right on that? Yes. Bumper harvest. And people will ask you, how did you do it? Usually will not, you will not tell them where they were. You will just say, it's just God's grace. But you and the herbalist and even God, you know that a transaction happened. Now listen carefully. Your eyes will be open to something I will teach you now. That is corrupted power, manipulated power. God is not glorified through the process because it is minus. It does not reveal and glorify Jesus. However, that process you see is a manipulation of spiritual laws. It is not an invention of Satan. Familiar spirits demand fraternity to reveal certain secrets to men by reason of their advantage being spirits. You are going to be learning. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Will you blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. I do not know any herbalist, any spiritist, or anybody, at least we see from Nigerian film, that you come and meet and say Baba or whoever, because they are both male and female, whether Baba or Mama, whichever one, I need help. Look up, please. Who will just tell you, you need help? Go, it is done. Even if it's your biological father, he will demand action. There is something you must do. And based on the gravity of what you want to be done, that is the level of demand. There are sometimes they may say, are you ready to give your wife? Ah, my wife. But I'm desperate for this position. Say, well, we have consulted with the realm of the spirit and we have found out that this is the condition connected to this. And there are people sadly who would do it. That even includes your soul. The Bible is clear as to the fact that there is a place on earth where men can do business even with their soul and gain the world as a result. And the Bible, he knows that it will work. You gain the whole world by losing your soul. And the result will work. You are gaining the whole world, but will not see your soul that has been lost, unfortunately. Hmm. Everywhere the power of God is dispensed, there must be a demand for obedience. Look at the ministry of Jesus. Everywhere you see Jesus manifesting power, especially in the midst of men there will always be an action there will always be he would ask them a question do you believe i'm able to do this if you believe stand up pick up your bed and walk or what should i do for you 
You would think that as powerful and compassionate as he was and he is, he shouldn't even ask them any question. But there was always a demand because the power of God is faith dependent. Please listen carefully. The power of God is faith dependent. The power that lifts you is faith dependent. The power that attracts possibilities to your life is faith dependent. The power that will raise your children to become excellent people is faith dependent. The power that will grow that church to bring glory to God is faith dependent. And if you do not understand faith, then you cannot understand the power of God. Is someone learning? Now, I want to teach you three levels. There are three levels at which the power of God is accessed and released. Three levels. The power of God is accessed at three levels. And all those levels have the dimensions of possibilities that they bring. I want you to please lend me your attention now. We're in the school of power. Is someone learning? Three levels. Number one, write this down and please do not forget it. The first level is the power that has been programmed into laws and principles. Please write. There is a dimension of the power of God that has been programmed into laws, L-A-W-S, and principles. The first dimension of the power of God that all men, even the saints can access is the power of God that has been programmed into laws and principles. An instance is in Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. God made a very profound pronouncement there and he connected it to the earth. Look up please. It says, while the earth remaineth. Is that in your Bible? It says, seed time and harvest everybody say laws cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease have you seen any one of these seasons on earth sometimes the seasons will be so prolonged you would think the other one will not come but a dimension of God's power was invested into laws and principles and look at me the nature of this dimension of power is that it functions based on understanding, not relationship. You do not need a relationship with God to access this dimension of his power. That is the reason why an individual can reject God as God, but walk in keeping through understanding to these laws and access that dimension of power. This is a dimension of power that unbelievers have used to build conglomerates. Unbelievers have used the law of value has the power of God attached to it. The law of relationships has the power of God attached to it. It says he that wants friends must show himself friendly. Whether that person is a believer or not, the moment you are friendly, you, that dimension of God's power is kicked into your favor. Watch this. If a terrorist decides to maximize the rainy season to farm, will it bring crops for him? I hope you know that earth that produced for him is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. And yet that man as evil hearted as he is or they are will still farm because the power of God has been invested into the law of seed time and harvest. They will still have a bumper harvest. Please listen carefully, believers. Apostle, I desire power in my life. I want to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I don't know why I'm not seeing the power of God. You may have neglected this dimension of the power of God. Why are unbelievers striving and excelling? They don't love Jesus, yet we see them excel because they have mastered this dimension of accessing the power of God. They may not acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior. In fact, they may deny him to his face, but that does not mean the laws will stop working. If you understand me, say amen. amen. Let me, just, you, you don't need to write, just look at me. Let me list for you a few laws that have the power of God behind them. Are you ready? 
you can just listen number one is the law of diligence the bible says the diligent hand shall be made rich no matter who on earth the moment you subscribe to diligence there is a great future for you under normal circumstances if you are diligent and you do not prosper it takes demons to interrupt that law but under normal circumstances diligence should and productivity is connected to wealth and increase number two blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy that every time you show mercy you are programming that reality whether you are born again or not based on the laws of seasons and the laws of time and chance eventually that harvest will come to you herein lies the answer to the age-long question why is it that if God is the God of the universe there are believers who are suffering there are children who are crying across the globe how can a loving God be seated upon his throne and is watching children in Africa die whereas there are people who are renting jets and renting a lot of things and wasting their lives and it looks like God is watching them listen to me God gave every man a will and not even him will violate that will at the expense of your eternal destiny he allows you to choose whether you want to hand your life to him or not and if you reject him he will respect your decision even when satan rebelled against him in heaven he respected his decision unfortunately every decision comes with consequences it was not that god got up and decided to punish satan the judgment of Satan was the consequence of rebellion. Are we together? This is very powerful. So when we see people cry and die and scrounge around in our society, is a violation largely. Now, demon spirits have taken advantage of that state, but they are taking advantage of that state because they already know that there is a dimension of the power of God invested in principles. Watch this. So a gentleman gets up one day, I'm not talking of someone who is born again. We are believers, but I hope you understand why I'm teaching you this way. So a gentleman who is not even saved just gets up and reads a book. Maybe a book written by Bill Gates or a book written by any great man and makes up his mind that I'm going to take my destiny by my hands. Are we together? Now, this is somebody who is not saved and makes up his mind to walk with the things that are written there. He begins to change his attitude. He begins to subject himself through all kinds of things. He subscribes to mentorship. Are we together? Educate his mind. You will find out that the reality of that man begins to change. Remember our definition of power? The ability to control and to manipulate your outcome. The once poor and wretched gentleman suddenly begins to change. His life is changing. This gentleman has refused to accept the person of Jesus, but he has adopted the principles of Jesus. They may not acknowledge him as the author of those principles, but please, I want you to believe me that if you ever see any manifestation of power, it is because there is a dimension of God's power programmed in laws. Now, people call it all kinds of names some call it the laws of the universe some call it all kinds of laws some attribute it to mother nature unfortunately but we who are of the faith we know that's why i laid that foundation i have spoken once and twice have you heard that all power belongs to the lord so if i plant corn and i see that corn growing i don't congratulate the universe for giving me corn i give glory to jesus because i know that he's the one who empowered it but if i'm an unbeliever i can give that glory to my conscience or some kind of cosmic power this is the advantage that believers have when believers practice the laws of the kingdom the advantage is that we practice it as submitting to jesus and eventually the glory returns to jesus are you learning now but you neglect laws and principles and you find out that you have neglected a whole dimension of God's power you may never experience it in your life could it be that someone seated now you are born again you are saved but you have ignored obedience to principles and to laws spiritual laws laws that have been taught scriptural laws there are laws of growth. There are laws of leadership. 
there are laws of influence there are laws of multiplication there are laws of restoration which of them do you not know which of them do you know my assignment is by the ministry of the Holy Spirit to expose you to these laws of the kingdom. I call them mysteries. Matthew 13 and 11. Jesus himself was teaching the disciples and he said the kingdom was shrouded in mysteries. He says because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Watch a display of spiritual laws. Moses comes to stand in front of Pharaoh and he throws his rod and that rod becomes a serpent. Look at me. And then Janus and Jembes, they never called the name of Jesus, yet they threw their rod and it became that. Now, I'm not promoting evil. Never will I do so. It is for the purpose of my discussion with you. How many of you know that in our various villages, in our various market squares, and even some have been so sophisticated, there are people who are acclaimed magicians. Am I right on that? And they, they bastardize spiritual laws. You sit down. Sometimes you, you, you almost have to shut yourself from watching those things because they, the things that you seem to be craving to see manifest, they play child play they manipulate the laws of the spirit it only reveals to you the possibilities that are there that are yet to be tapped all power belongs to God so I lay hands on a sick person and says in the name of Jesus stand up from this wheelchair and the person stands up and you are clapping yet another person is in a village somewhere telling someone look I, I cannot stand up and they say don't worry we'll put a particular leaf we'll chant something and then the person gets up now two of us seem to have done the same thing the difference is that Jesus is glorified in one and Satan is glorified in the other are you getting what I'm saying now the believer listen to me there are many many formulas and there are many routes to accessing power but the believer for you to be a believer indeed you must be constrained to only the method that scripture provides that does not mean there are no other routes but the believer has a mandate please get this are we together now the difference between witchcraft and satanism and spiritism is that you are walking out of the confines of the provisions that scripture allows the believer is not just interested in outcomes you are interested in making sure that what you practice is in keeping with the principles that are revealed in scripture failure to know this is what has led many people into extra biblical practices and into all kinds of satanic things because when you now know that after all every law is God's law so let me manipulate it I can go and kill a goat and spill the blood after all the concept of blood was introduced by God himself not even Satan I can now manipulate you but when you know that as a believer part of what makes you a believer is your total submission to the authority of Scripture your total submission to the ways of God so if you advertise a strategy for me even if it is producing results and is inconsistent with scripture my being a believer mandates that i reject it are we together is someone learning now if you if you're understanding me say amen, amen. Hmm. why will i not just go and call some herbalist somewhere and say we're all co-laborers we're colleagues in this business the most important thing is we're getting people healed why will i not do that because the results may seem to have a similitude it may look like there's result but our convictions the government that we pledge our authority to are we together and the modus operandi the pathway we follow are very different i will not hate them but i'm not going to fraternize with them because i do not believe that why should paul in acts chapter 16 cast a demon out of a damn cell who was using it to prophesy to people if it was just about the prophetic he rebuked her because in doing that satan was manipulating that thing are we together now and he was using it to deceive many people and to bring gains to many people if someone is learning say amen, amen. so 
the first level at which the power of God is accessed is the power programmed into laws and principles. Please hear me. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you? Do you know why laws are very predictable? Watch this. Some of you, especially our international guests, you took a flight from your various nations to come here. Most likely the person who flew you was not a believer. Yet that whole aircraft and the system worked in keeping with the law of aerodynamics. The law of aerodynamics is not a scientific law. It is a spiritual law that was discovered and used by science. Are we together now? What you call scientific laws, go and ask the inventors of those laws. Is it the laws of mechanics? Is it the law of whatever it is? Everything you call a law today, we just say they are spiritual laws and natural laws simply because of the dimensions where they find expression. But in truth, there are only spiritual laws. All laws are spiritual because they have the power of God back in them. Are we together? So, men like Sir Isaac Newton, in their study of mechanics, they, start, they stumbled across several laws and put their postulations together. Are we together? There were many other scientists, Michael Faraday, look at this. Today we are enjoying and preaching the gospel because of a concept called electricity. The Wright brothers, are we together now? Henry Ford, all of these people, the inventions in our world today are simply spiritual laws that have been tapped and have been converted into a way and a strategy that betters the lives of people. That means even when no plane had flown in the air, the law of aerodynamics was still there. Only God knows how many other laws are there that we are yet to find. Once upon a time, listen, many of you remember, once upon a time, if you went to the bank, you could not transfer money from your branch to another branch. No. Not to talk of whoever believed that you can hold a phone and with your phone you can do transactions you can talk to anybody across the world. Remember those days when rain falls and your nightel line cuts. You have to carry a ladder and start strolling around your community looking for which one a tree has fallen on now. To fix it so that your phone will come back. But right now with one dial, with one dial you can be talking to someone from anywhere across the globe. Those laws were always there. Just because we did not know them. The power of God remained dormant on that wise. Today we talk of AI and all these technological things. Look at how excited we are entering into it. Yet they have always been there. Please listen to me. If you understand what I'm telling you, your life will become phenomenal. You will now respect the laws of God. This organization will always lead to depletion. It's a law. Even if it is practiced by a Christian, the moment you are disorganized in leadership, in ministry, as a person, there will never be growth with disorganization. Scatter your clothes and try to put it in a bag. You find out that it seems like it cannot enter. Iron them and arrange the same clothes. You will now be able to close the bag. Disorganization will always lead to depletion. It's a law. Now, watch this. Why am I teaching you this? So that in wanting to see the power of God made manifest in your life, you will see that God was so determined that he invested his power in laws and principles. Wealth has a law. Kingdom wealth does not just work on laws alone. When you now bring kingdom, it is not only laws now. You have to bring in the will of God and the purposes of God. That's why there is a difference between wealth and kingdom wealth. There is a difference between influence and kingdom influence. Influence, you just need to work on the law of growth, result, productivity, leadership. But when you bring kingdom to it, you now have to submit to the will of God. Are we learning now? Look at the advancements we are making in medicine. Watch this. I hope you know that the same malaria that today, if someone said, I have fever or malaria, they say, oh, sorry, just stroll to a pharmacist there, talk with the pharmacist, and they will give you some drug. Nobody will lament. In fact, many people will not even pray. They will just say it's well. But the same malaria once upon a time on earth here, if you had it, it was as though you had HIV. Am I right? It was as though you had cancer. 
Yet there were laws that had these solutions. One day, scientists together stumbled across a combination that could sort out malaria so easily. Now someone can even be doing his work and say, you know, I've had malaria. And you say, sorry. And you expect to see that person by next week. The power of laws. That means cancer that is killing people today. Listen carefully. That means <laughs> HIV that is killing people today. There is a supernatural dimension to it. But please, I want you to believe me that God who put his power in laws, there is every solution. It is the, this is where the assignment of the Holy Ghost comes. You will be learning how inventions happen. Invention is not brain work. Invention is a spirit assisting a man to find where these laws are. Alongside the combination, go and ask inventors. They will tell you inventors are usually lonely people they alienate themselves from society it is that level of consecration that introduces them to spirits they may not acknowledge that i'm interacting with a spirit they will say a voice told me join this join that join this and boom something happens there were people from as far back as 1992 1993 who predicted the technological advancement of these days not by word of knowledge the progression of inventions and that happened by the assistance of spirits we are still coming to the other dimensions I am just telling you that watch this we are immersed in a myriad of spiritual laws waiting for us to understand the Bible is the believers compendium of these laws that if you find out from this Bible, whoever knew that if someone is sick, you can play worship and play all of this and it can bless the person and it can be healed. Now medical science is telling us that even people who submit themselves to these atmospheres and these energies, that they have a, 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 a chance of recovery than those who are allowed to be lonely and just sit back there. But this, right from the beginning, these things were in the Bible. Now, hear me. I know that people have used satanic and demonic laws to destroy. My goal is to help you know that these laws work because it is the power of God that is behind them. Forever until Jesus comes, when you get an airplane and the laws of aerodynamics is working well, when you move that plane, are we together now? It is going to go upon the air and we are going to travel and keep traveling, taking the gospel and taking whatever it is on the strength of that law. Many people have come here today. Look at your phone. Once upon a time, do you remember something called Nokia 3310? <laughs> remember how proud you were the day you bought it? You flaunted it, the same thing you are hiding today. When you are sorting your clothes and you find it, you quickly destroy it. You don't want to identify with it. Just, I'm just giving an example. But you can imagine that once upon a time, that was your pride. It would have been a dream to imagine that you can sit down and be watching Koinonia from your phone. Some of you, there are children who do not even know what a cafe is. How about typewriters? Semicolon LKJ, you were taught. And some of you got zero because you couldn't understand it. Where will I put my fingers? Hmm. Are we together? Yet, the laws that can make the globe to be at the, at the hand of a man, it's like this, just here. Today you can do any kind of thing. Unimaginable things. The laws. Believers, please hear me. Before Jesus returns, let me tell you, one of the things that the Spirit of God is doing is he's opening the eyes of believers to see other laws, combinations that will provide solutions to men. I'm not just talking of supernatural solutions to the church because there are dimensions of supernatural solutions that the world will not receive. So God brings it down through laws. If I pluck a leaf now and I say eat it, you call me a herbalist. But if I consult with a pharmacist 
and turn that leaf into a pill and I say swallow it and cancer disappears you will call that an invention and you are right let me tell you there are many leaves that are for the healing of the nations you see some of our some of our aged parents in almost every village I know in Africa there's usually one old man who was trained to combine some leaves you just come and say my head is paining he said, just relax he will stroll around as if he's looking for something that is missing and bring all kinds of things pound them and say oh yeah you eat it and to your shock now it was demonic spirits that taught them but I'm teaching you that those laws demonic spirits do not invent power they only because they know that men unassisted are ignorant they will come to you and claim that they want to give you power your their own court from the deal is your loyalty to them then they will now show you certain spiritual combinations this is how witchcraft happens witchcraft is a manipulation of god's power that comes through a necessary alliance with satan intended to ultimately give you a semblance of result while corrupting your desire for God but make no mistakes about it if your plane still flies if you still switch on your phone can you imagine that you send a text and it does not make a mistake to enter another number eight billion people there about on earth yet the person you are sending to it gets to his phone in a moment I'm holding right here a mic when I watch the videos of um, Catherine Kuhlman and all these people when this kind of invention was in its infancy you see them hanging they, they, they hang all kinds of things like a growth around their waist and carry it I mean you can imagine hanging something this heavy yet yeah, to them they were impressed because it was an invention and today to many people I'm even living in a stone age holding this are we together my question for you is what else is there it will be foolishness to imagine that we have exhausted the laws that are there what else is there that someone can come up with something called YouTube and in a moment you can broadcast a meeting like this to the ends of the earth and everybody is connecting once upon a time if you did not have television you will cry you will save now your TV for some of you has been off for a long time because another kind of TV was given to you what if you are given another that you do not have to hold again Are you saying it will not happen? Number two. Some of you are already afraid. <laughs> Jesus. The power that is in the name of Jesus is not just for destruction of the camp of the enemy alone. Are we together? There are witty inventions, combinations. Doctors hear me, medical people hear me. There are laws that are waiting for you. And very soon I believe, some believer somewhere will have his eyes open to see what we need to combine to kill cancer permanently. All of these demonic things that keep staring us at the face. We watch our loved ones carrying all kinds of things. Satanic things that keep plaguing them from a medical standpoint I'm telling you there are many laws that will be coming by the Spirit of God that will come up with supernatural solutions solutions that end on timely death solutions that bring that a day will come someone will say I'm feeling a trace of cancer and it will be like malaria go and take this and it's over say amen no. From a medical standpoint and with all due respect to them there are certain diseases and certain organs in the human body 
that if and when it begins to deteriorate, they tell you that there is no way for recovery. They only manage it. I respect medicine with all my heart, but from the authority of scripture, I can tell you the wisdom of God is bigger than that. God will never design a system. Recovery and restoration is a part of the nature of God as far as he's dealing with men is concerned. And I'm sure that sooner or later, one spirit-filled scientist is going to debunk certain things and say, we have found a way to reverse liver problems. We have found a way to reverse kidney problems. We have found a way to reverse stage four cancer. Shout amen if you believe that. Number two. The second dimension of the power of God is the power that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. Please write it down. The power that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. This is the highest dimension of power that any person in this side of God's kingdom can access. The power that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. Please look at me. As powerful as laws and principles are, in themselves, they do not capture the complete power of God. There are dimensions of God's power that does not come just through understanding of laws. You will need to have an actual relationship with the Lord and you will need to pursue intimacy with God. That dimension of power is the reward that you get for intimacy with God. That is the dimension where supernatural power resides. The power to do impossible things supernaturally. So I can give somebody by the operation of laws, Panadol and whatever it is, and the person can recover. But then the person can come and with one word, I can say in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you seeing now? All power, but different dimensions of power. And the person is healed. Someone can follow the normal laws of wealth, respectfully so, and he's building gradually, but I can come and speak prophetically over him and say by this time tomorrow and program a climate of favor and someone just says, do you know what? I'm giving you 100 million. Now look at that kind of thing. I have superimposed, I have brought another dimension of power. Listen, let me tell you the truth. The power that comes through intimacy is, is, a, is marvelous in its operation. Because this one is not what you receive with your hands. This one is a heart connection. This is your, your, your pressing into God. I love you for who you are. Your growth in the spirit, growth through the word, growth in the place of prayer. Are we together? Your passionate pursuit of God. Show me a man that loves God sincerely. Show me a man devoted and dedicated who will open up his heart to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I show you a man who is about to stumble across genuine supernatural power. Drugs. There is no drug we know today that can raise the dead. It can only help those who are alive. Even medical science will tell you. Are we together? Once someone is confirmed clinically dead, and after a while it is true that the person is dead completely, even the doctors, even the consultants, and we celebrate them and appreciate them greatly for their contributions, but they will stand in honest admission that we have done our best. This person has gone. Yet, ah, there is an ability. The Bible tells us, that when it has to do with that dimension of power, even death is not the end. Now, we may not have entered into the fullness of that experience yet, but we must admit that it is a possibility because the Bible says it. And Jesus showed it. He died. Jesus died. Jesus ate bread, oh. Jesus ate fish, but bread and fish could not bring him back. But if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Listen, I know that as it is now, we have not mastered raising the dead. We lose loved ones here and there. But can I tell you, in the midst of your pain, settle it that there is still a dimension of God's power. 
and I assure you before Jesus returns, there will be men who will embody these dimensions. There are men who are pressing into God sincerely. We may be crawling like babies, but we are still moving. Deeper levels of intimacy, deeper levels in prayer, deeper levels with the word. And from one level to the other, we are stepping into the prophetic. We are stepping into dimensions. Someday, all it takes is one man, one man to dive into that river. Dive into that river of power. Listen, let me tell you how the economy of God works. He does not take a crowd into new experiences. Usually, it's just one person one person who will push and say lord i will not rest one person the prophetic is wonderful but this is not the end oh god there has to be an ability to raise the dead with the level of mastery you use to heal headache all it takes is for one person now let me tell you there is a side effect if you become that one person you will be persecuted greatly because men as a track record persecute their saviors but your sustainability will begin to reproduce your kind and sooner or later you will find out go and read about the right brothers if you were alive in their days you would join those insulting them and say go and look for something intelligent to do with your life but they remained go and study on michael faraday go and study on nikola tesla go and study on all these men today we celebrate their inventions but they lived lonely life they were the mockery of society people looked at them like outcasts but there was something within their spirit the same way someone here you cannot describe it but you know the holy ghost has been telling you some of you have seen it in your dreams you have seen it in your vision this cannot be it there is still a higher level of power Thank God for the miracle services. Thank God for falling down and standing up. But we are talking about tapping into the powers of the age to come. Levels of realities that the world has not seen. I don't know about you, but this has been my lifelong pursuit. There are things I've only seen in the spirit. And my desire is that in my lifetime, that we will be able to bring some of these realities here and now. Kai. read your Bible and watch men Joshua tells the son stand still that one is not a law because nobody has replicated it that one oh, is not a law how do you look at the son and tell it to stand still ah. Moses looks listen listen we brag and say we're in the New Testament yet we don't come close to what this man did. Listen, I'm telling you my spirit is fired up right now. A man, an ordinary man, leading 2.5 million people. He stands at the Red Sea, a stammerer, and he holds his stick and drops it on that water. And it's not a parable. It parted heater and teeter. Hear me? Your Bible talks about a man called Noah who did not study architecture, yet he built an ark. It was not a parable. Have you built any structure that can host all the animals in the world? And that, listen, the best of the structures in the world have been victims of tsunamis, have been victims of all kinds of tornadoes and volcanoes. But that which Noah built, no pillar to the ground, standing on water, yet it did not sink. What technology did he deploy? Listen, many of us here are science-based. Prove to me that you can build an ark of gopher wood with a lot of space inside. Are we together? And put all the animals in the wall. That weight must make it sink. Are we together? All the animals in the world. And then the heavens give rain. And the earth also gives rain. And yet it does not capsize. It does not turn around. Come on. There are realms beyond science. There are realms beyond physics. There are realms that only intimacy can take you there. Please believe us, hear me. I speak to an intellectual generation. I respect your intellect, but there are realms and virgin dimensions in the spirit that it takes hunger 
and a press that men can access power power that science cannot explain there are dimensions of grace I'm telling you there is a generation every generation will not fail I assure you there is a generation that will get it there is a generation that will get it there is a generation that will get it it is a hunger in the heart of God every generation will not miss it I have watched the videos of God's generals by the privilege of God's grace I have heard of the things that they did I have read about the church in Nigeria the mighty men and women who God used and we salute everything they have done but like every generation we also saw their limitations I'm telling you there is a generation that will demonstrate God to the earth that will dumbfound principalities and powers living walking miracles living walking miracles living walking miracles there are thrones there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no this hear me there are many of you beyond level one businessman I know you have learned all the laws of business but can I tell you that there are still demon spirits and they have the power to manipulate those laws so that even in your obedience of them they may not seem to happen this is where this other dimension comes the dimension through intimacy that you can speak with one word and shift the spiritual climate of a territory I know this because it will happen I have seen it many times in my visions and I don't know who will avail himself to say Lord there has to be a generation that will get it there has to be a generation that will get it Hallelujah. Watch this. Here's what Jesus said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, is that in your Bible? It says, shall he also do? Then he says, greater works. Hear me. Now, respectfully speaking, I salute all of us together for what we are doing. But when you hear me tell you that we are still, the version of spirituality we are in now is the version of typewriter technologically. There are still levels to enter. It's because of our slow place that is garnished by a lot of pride and arrival mentality. Thank God for the little we have seen. But believe me, I'm not just trying to be humble. I am telling you there are realms that we have not stepped into. Where we access the powers of the age to come. Men who become like God upon the earth. Hallelujah. When was the last time that you saw a flood about to wash a nation and you stood and said, Flood, thus far have you come. No further shall you go. Listen, we have so recycled the little results that we have that we have built a camp of mediocrity around it. No. Tonight's message is not for the nominal Christian who is satisfied with falling down and standing up. Tonight's message is not for the nominal Christian who just wants to give one prophecy, one word of knowledge. Tonight's message is not for someone who just wants to give Greek and Hebrew. We are talking of men who become living wonders, conduits of kingdom possibilities.
Hallelujah. We brag about seeing angels. We brag about going to the realm of the spirit. We brag about meeting demons. We brag about meeting Jesus. But we cannot see the power that is connected to that intimacy. Because every time people met Jesus in the Bible, they came back with something they could prove. Now, I'm, I don't, I'm not trying to mock or be sarcastic. But I have read books of people who supposedly claim that they met Jesus every day for a long time. The Jesus you read in this Bible, find out those who met him for three and a half years. Look at what he left with them. They turned the world upside down. Whoever met Jesus and went back the same. Tell me one person who met Jesus. And yet we say we have met him. Yet we claim like we are drinking tea every day with him. And after all of that, the corresponding manifestation of power. Now, I have read my Bible. When Paul met him, look what happened to Paul. Paul, a, a hunger was in him that at the zenith of his apostolic ministry, all he could say that I may know him. Let me meet him one more time. Let him do something to me. How about Peter? How about John? The madman at Gadara, he didn't have a vision of him every day. He met him once and became an evangelist. Can I tell you, we must re-examine the Jesus we have been seeing. Because I'm not trying to be sarcastic. Let me tell you the truth. I have read my Bible. Let God be true and all men liars. I have met Jesus and I know what happened to me. When you meet Jesus, there must be proof that you met him. The glory that emanates from your life, find out what happened when Moses met him for 90 days. Moses did not even know his face was shining. Is when he came down, men said, what is this? They said, what, does it, what kind of glow does it take to use a veil in the afternoon? Ladies and gentlemen, this revival thing we keep talking about, Ba, we're only going to waste our time if we don't mean business. A genuine encounter with the God of the Bible a genuine encounter with the Holy Spirit must leave a, a provable deposit of God within you that you can take back as a gift. Listen, we are ordinary men. There are times that some of these my lovely children come to me and I'm tempted to give them gifts. Sometimes I can bring out 10 naira. This is me, a man. Yet I know the value of seeing how I can respond to them. How much more the God of heaven. And he sat with you and spoke with you Joshua Selman, you saw him, is it true? Where is the proof? And you have the effrontery to say light left him and came to you. Where is the light? Swallow your pride. Tonight, come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know, in his hands are the keys to eternal life. It's a little here, a little there, and then your day will dawn. He's at work in you, changing everything. Hear me. There were men and women in the Bible who manifested certain dimensions of grace. Many of them have died today, but they left their dealings with God. The journey did not start for them by learning laws. It started by a pursuit of God. The prophet could look at the woman. How many of us can speak like Elisha? Madam, what do you want us to do for you? How can a man speak like that? Should I talk to the president for you? Don't ask me how. I know my ways to reach him. And she says, no, I live among my people. All of a sudden... The servant comes to say, I notice this woman has no child. And cheaply, this is not experimentation. The prophet looks at her and says, according to the time of life. He never said, call on me and update me with the result. Mm -mm. One statement. These ones are not laws. This is power that comes through intimacy. 
that someone comes to meet you and says man of God this is the last opportunity there is somebody dying in the hospital that's not when you should start teaching principles of friendliness or administration and say you see the dieting is a very serious thing that is wonderful only when the person is going to leave this guy is dying let me tell you the kind of men that God is looking for people who will stand and say let that sick person come that you will know there is a prophet in Israel and with one pronunciation Naaman no matter how long your leprosy is it is about to turn go and wash in Jordan seven times does not make sense but this is a realm higher than science and Naaman returns back and is healed Jesus is strolling around Nain and he's seen a widow who is about to bury her child haven't buried her husband and Jesus says stop what is going on here and the woman is crying and he says drop that coffin down my goodness can I tell you man of God the day three dead people confirmed medically come back to life in your church is whether it's poster or Facebook you don't no matter what it is it is security that will have to protect you because of the way people will weary you I respect church growth principles but there are superior principles the manifestation of genuine power from heaven the Bible says where the carcasses are there the eagles will gather can I tell you there are people who park full stadiums because footballers are about to play football and they pay for it and they smuggle their way through the space and they are happy when something spectacular begins to happen most of the miracles that happen to us are still within the realm of controversy that is the reason why it is not compelling enough did it really happen this wheelchair did the person really stand up this headache did it how are we sure all that there, there there are levels called notable miracles manifestations of the power of god that even the sanhedrin council can say this one we cannot see anything against it power from on high that this woman was barren and suddenly comes with four children ah then just when you are trying to say some manipulation a dead body comes back to life five blind people look at how this blindness that was struggling to open people's eyes is your eye open the person said my eye is not open no i'm not seeing yet there was a prophet in the bible who played with blindness and sight in a moment called elisha lord open his eyes he opened the servant's eyes close the eyes of an army their eyes were closed take them to samaria open their eyes look at he was playing with it that there is a formula listen i'm not just entertaining you except you are not a believer what did this man know what did this man carry today if one blind eye is open whether verified or not we are so excited and thank god for it but what did the prophet know what did elijah know that he could laugh at the prophets of Baal? if you saw someone come with a charm right now a confirmed herbalist you say apostle where are you come and stand close to me as we pray because of fear yet Elijah was laughing and said call Baal maybe there was a time business was failing they could not catch any fish watch Jesus if I were the one I would now start teaching principles of fishing and there is a place for that I taught you come in the night put your net and allow the fish to just play around it are we together bait them with feed and then you come and drag it and you catch fish that is the principle of fishing but watch what Jesus does he says little children have you any catch and Peter says we've been struggling what do you mean by have you any catch he said cast your net to the right side game over cast your net to the right side it does not matter whether, whether the fish what if that grace can come on you as a man of God to speak over your business people? Do you know what can happen to them? You are not endorsing laziness, but that this guy is in debt already. It is not a principle that will bring him out of debt. A family, listen, when the prophet met a woman who was in debt, he did not share principles. Now, don't get me wrong. 
there are principles that can bring her when she when she her debt issue was solved he now said go and sell and live with the rest he now introduced principles there is a power of God that is invested in buying and selling but with respect to this tragedy now you need a higher level of power shut your door and begin to pour the oil shut your door listen if we do not access this level of power can i tell you the devil is going to start using diseases like cancer hiv all these satanic diseases and he's going to waste a generation there are real spirits that are oppressing God's people. There are mysterious occurrences happening to men in business. A man will build a house that he knows he built well. Some wind will just come and the whole house collapses. That is not an architectural problem. That is witchcraft. The solution is not just to add cement. The solution is to understand the mysteries of priesthood that somebody can go and stand there and say in the name of the Lord Jesus O earth hear ye the word of the Lord sit down can I give you the last one and then I will teach you oh dear wherever we stop we'll pray number one the power of God programmed into laws and principles did you get that Number two, the power of God that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. Number three, the power that is accessed through covenant connections. The third and final dimension of God's power is accessed through covenant connections. What does that mean? That means an individual who has a covenant with God that has allowed for certain manifestations of his power. When you get connected to that person by covenant or by prophetic covering, you can become a partaker and a beneficiary of that dimension of God's power. Even though personally you may not be able to command it in your life, but by reason of that connection. An example for the sake of time, you find that in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 5, then when we go to 13 from verse 1 to 6, it is the story of um, Abraham and Lot. The Bible talks about Abraham, that God called him and he says, and Lot went with him. When we get to chapter 13 from verse 1, when you read down to 6, the Bible says Abraham became rich in cattle, rich in all of this because of his covenant with God. But it says Lot, who also went with him, with no effort on his part, also began to prosper. The moment Lot connected, disconnected from Abraham, he started going down until he found himself in Sodom. Covenant connections. Another example, that should be 2 Kings chapter 6. Give it to us, please. The story of Elisha, 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's start from verse 8. I hope I got that right. 2 Kings 6 and verse 8. The king of Syria warred against Israel. Watch this. And took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And every time the king discussed it, the Bible says, the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you do not pass through this place. So the king of Syria kept getting angry, and he called his men and said, There is an insider betraying us here. And they said, No, my lord, not so. It is this prophet called Elisha. He's the one who has been revealing the secret. And he now sent warriors. Are we together now? He sent warriors, and then by night, they encamped all around Elisha. And then by morning, that should be, give us verse um, 16. Give us verse 16. Elisha, the servant, was now afraid. And when they got up, there was an army all around them. And the Bible says, Elisha answered and said to him, Fear, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now we're reading to 23, verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Listen, do you know the level of spiritual sacrifice and investment it takes for your eyes to be open under normal circumstances? And yet a prophet cheaply makes a request to God, not minding whether his servant believed it or not. And the Bible says the Lord opened the eyes of the young man I hope you know by now Gehazi had become leprous, so he was no longer his servant. He was another one now. And he saw 
and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha 18 and when they came down to him Elisha prayed again to tell you it is not a mistake he said smite these people I pray with blindness that's it and he smote them can you imagine it was as if God was a slave to a man smites these people and that's it a whole army these men were dangerous people imagine Nigerian army for instance preparing for war and suddenly the presidency gets a call that all our military men have become blind why because somebody sat on the mountain and made a decree these men were alive on earth he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha 19 and Elisha said to them this is not the way neither this is a city follow me and I will bring you to the man whom you seek he led them to Samaria verse 20 the Bible says it came to pass when they were come into Samaria that Elisha said Lord open the eyes of this man what if their eyes did not open again he was so sure open their eyes that they may see and the Lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold they were in the midst of Samaria and the king of Israel said unto Elisha when he saw them my father shall I smite them shall I smite them 22 and he answered thou shalt not smite them wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow he says set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go back to their master 23 and he prepared great provision for them watch this and when they had eaten and drunk he sent them away and they went to their master so the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel there is another way to keep a land safe war is one strategy the other one is through the accurate manifestation of superior prophetic manifestations that a whole army how do you know who will you send to kill such a man when you are blind before you arrive if they send you will you go <laughs> read about Elijah resting up the mountain and a band of 50 people come you see how Elijah was harsh he did not even command blindness his own was fire to come on them another band came fire came the third when they came they begged him they said it's not we are not coming on our own we were instructed please come down and follow us they called him the troublemaker of israel this was jezebel's own testament testimony there are men who will turn this world upside down but hear me this third level is very powerful because there are possibilities you desire to work in your life but as at yet you may not have ascended that realm in the spirit you can through covenant connection align with men and women who by the grace of God have accessed those realms and you can start partaking of those possibilities even before you come into it experientially this is true there are people who got planted under certain graces under certain churches and they began to prosper and they did not even know so much about prosperity because they came under this third level of the power of God when God calls men you see there are covenants that he has with them and provided they walk in keeping with the conditions that maintain that covenant there are graces that are released through those covenants and the graces are not just for the benefit of the men alone it says I and the children Children that the Lord has given me is that in your Bible we are for signs not I am for signs we are for signs it started with I but it extended to the children that the Lord had given me then it says we all together the one with the covenant and the one who has come through connection that's why certain times you see us speak in this ministry and sometimes you may think it's arrogance about certain graces that God has put here that if you have an understanding you see people come and stand and testify and just say it and sometimes respectfully speaking very unassuming people and you are wondering how did this thing add up here that is the power of covenant connections if Jonah enters your boat you will go down whether you are good or not you can know all the principles that make you a businessman plus Jonah you are going down Am I right on that? If Jesus enters your boat, no matter what goes wrong, even if it's only water that is in the boat, with the presence of Jesus, it will not go down. Covenant relationships are powerful. 
So the Spirit of God told Philip, join this chariot. And he joined the chariot and he met an Ethiopian eunuch who was reading about the Messiah, the prophecy. He was coming from Jerusalem, the place of, of worship. And now he began to explain to him. And when they found water, he said, this is water, can I be baptized? He said, understandest what thou readest. He said, how can I accept some man teach me? Ladies and gentlemen, every time you see the power of God manifesting on earth, it comes across men on these three platforms. Number one, principles and laws. That is not relationship dependent. That is purely a matter of understanding. Are we together? The second dimension that I've taught you is the highest that comes through relationships. This one comes directly from God. When you press into the things of God, there is a deposit of divinity upon you that can be proven here and now. And this is why we press in worship, we press in prayer, are we together? We press in fasting, we press loving Jesus. Because we love him, but we hope to be able to attain unto this state of power in the spirit. And then the third, God has connected us strategically to men and women across the globe to provide that advantage of accessing superior dimensions of God's power, even through covenant connections. Now listen, the last thing I'm going to teach you before we pray is for the power of God to be expressed on earth, write it down please. For the power of God to be expressed on earth. One of these five elements must be used. For the power of God to be expressed on earth. That means the power of God can never be expressed and seen in the world of men until his power is in partnership with one or more of these five elements. Put a colon and let me list the elements for you. Every time you see the power of God manifest in the Bible, every time you see the power of God manifest on earth, there must be a participation of these five elements. Number one, light. Light. Number two, sound. Just write. You will never see the manifestation of the power of God on earth except it comes through these conduits. One, light. Two, sound. Three, fire. Four, earth. E-A-R-T-H. Five, water. One, light. Two, sound. Three, fire four f five water please look up these are mysterious elements that god planted in our world you will never see the manifestation of god's power until it comes through one or more of these elements are we together this is very important now watch this god himself calls the word light and speaking about light in John 1 5 he says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not watch this the entire creation from a biological standpoint today survives on light am I right on that in this case the light of the Sun in biology we study about the light and dark reaction remember the process by which plants convert sunlight to chlorophyll remember you were taught in basic biology yes light we draw sunlight and men on earth will die because there will no longer be plants there will no longer be food and it's mysterious that this light you see is older than everybody on earth yet it does not diminish in glory the light of the sun remains fixed never to diminish your cloth will diminish even your own face will diminish under normal circumstances but this sun has remained constant this light you see is a mystery till today science cannot define light they can only describe it using numerical figures light is a mystery it was outsourced from the realm of the spirit 
are we together now the first thing God released upon the earth was light let there be light let there be element number one number two sound sound it is because of the presence of sound that words can move and can be heard am I right on that is that true as powerful as words are they are only as powerful as the sound that conveys them this is very important when you read Ezekiel chapter 47 for sake of time you will see there Ezekiel said I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound you see sound playing a role there in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 now when the day of Pentecost was fully come the Bible says they were all gathered in one place the first thing that happened is suddenly there came a sound sound the supernatural will never find expression until there is the element of sound it's amazing that people can come here sick people can come here oppressed and all those spirits are hearing and all the conditions are quiet until sound comes in the name of Jesus Christ the man who was seated at gate beautiful his miracle was sound dependent he was there for many years but here comes an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ silver and gold I do not have but such as I have give I unto you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth rise up and work that sound the Bible says he lifted the man and he leaping stood you have that down number three fire hmm. the power of God manifests itself through the element and the conduit of fire I wish I had time I'm so sorry I'm compressing this this thing that I've taught you can become a one month lecture back to back every day I can break every one of these facets but this is just to give us a general appreciation of power fire remember in exodus chapter 3 that was the element that god used to draw the attention of moses a bush that was burning and yet would not be consumed is that in your bible moses fire the element of fire fire till today is still a very mysterious we give it all kinds of definitions can you imagine set fire in this place you can't hold it you can't box it it will burn everything in front of it fire does not fear fire does not run away you can't put it in your pocket what kind of element is that it is so light you can set it anywhere it is not so heavy yet it will burn anything on earth in fact the judgment on earth will happen through fire fire is a mysterious element that reduces everything to his unit listen carefully fire reduces everything to its unit everything bring your car as wonderful as it is go and throw it into a blast furnace and watch that car become like a piece of paper fire is a deep mystery you watch a beautiful building let that building catch fire the only thing that will be left is just the skeletal structure of that building fire on the day of Pentecost after the sound the next thing that came was fire fire it came and sat on their head and Jesus said there are two kinds of baptisms that will happen to you he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost you know as I just mentioned fire I just saw like just fire just he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost the baptism of fire is a different kind of baptism on its own like fire in your bones listen the supernatural only finds expression when it wants to find especially when God is revealing himself as a warrior and one who is coming in judgment his power is it comes through that conduit of fire number four for sake of time 
earth. Hmm. This one is a very mysterious element, the earth. Look at me. Number one, the earth is a universal point of contact. That means everybody on earth, what joins a point of contact means that I can guarantee that everybody is standing upon the earth. The earth is a universal point of contact. Number two, this earth you see, all of the food that man eats to live comes from the earth. This is a very deep mystery. When men die, we do not throw them in the air to float. We bury them in the earth. And after many years, if you go back there, all you will find is skeleton and sand. Not skeleton and liver. Not skeleton and eyes. Every other thing that is not bones is reduced to dust. It says, for from dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. Do you know the meaning of that? We depend on the earth literally for our survival because the plants, the trees that feed us come from the earth. Are we together now? Yes. So the prophet will say, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. There is something in the Bible called famine that at times of famine even the earth does not produce are we together the earth something happens to the earth something is spoken to the earth that stops it from producing and everybody starts suffering the bible says even because the earth failed money failed and men came in egypt and said buy us this earth you see is a mysterious substance the oil that has caused war across nations the earth agriculture that feeds nations the earth real estate that looks like the ultimate store of value the earth real estate is not the sky real estate is the earth imagine how expensive a piece of earth is some of us have been looking for it all around this city and even though you see it plenty your portion has not yet come to you because there is a mystery that brings you to your portion of the earth. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes. When you move to America, respectfully, or you move to um, UK, or you move to France, you are simply moving from one part of the earth to another. You are still in the earth. Is that true? There are possibilities that are locked up within the earth. And this is where because of the awareness of what I have told you, there are people who have erroneously moving out of the way the Holy Spirit teach. They've started manipulating things within the earth, you see, because they know that there is a dimension of God's power invested in the earth and that the earth is one of the conduits for the supernatural. Jesus himself, in trying to open the eyes of a blind man, he spat on the ground. Is that true? And he mixed it with clay and put it in his eyes and said, go and wash at a pool called Siloam. Why would Jesus do that? The prophets were eating the food that came from the earth. And they said, ah, there is death in the pot. It came from the earth. Agriculture, we have all kinds of soils. In fact, the Bible even calls us earthen vessels. Earthen vessels that the best of us, no matter how well decorated, is an earthen vessel. Are we together now? This is very powerful. And number five, for the sake of our teaching tonight, the fifth conduit by which the power of God is transmitted to the saints, water. I can spend the whole night teaching you on this mysterious entity called water. I'm not teaching the worship of these things. I'm educating your mind to understand how the supernatural happens. This water you see is a very deep mystery. Genesis 1 from verse 20 to 22, water is associated with abundance. Genesis 1, and God said, let's read together. <laughs> Let the waters bring forth abundantly. Stop. Let the waters do what? So the water is like a woman. She can be pregnant and she can give birth to certain things abundance let the water 
Why didn't God say, let abundance come? After all, he said, let there be light. Why would God instruct waters to bring forth abundance in the earth? Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life, the fowl of the air. Can you imagine? These birds you see, where did they come from? It's in your Bible. 21. <laughs> Some of you are wondering, why did I come to church today? And God created the great whales and every living creature that moved, which the waters brought forth abundantly. Which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every wing fall after its kind. And God saw that what the waters produced was good. Look at me. 70% of the earth thereabout is water. Am I right on that? Same with the human body. No matter how healthy you are, be starved of water for a while. Let everything still be fine in your body. You will die. Isn't it a mystery? I want you to take water and look at it in your hands. And you will respect God in a new way. What is this thing called water? Now, the thing about water that is mysterious is that we found it here. Every bottle of water you are drinking, you are not the first to drink it. Hmm. Water has access to every human body. The water you are drinking today. <laughs> ah. How in the world, the bottle you are using, you are the first to use it. But the water inside is as a result of evaporation and condensation. Did they not teach you in agriculture, biology, and science something called the water circle? Am I right on that? Evaporation, condensation, and the process repeats itself again. My question is, who else drank it before you? Listen, you go and now ask Apostle John why he said there are three witnesses in heaven. The Spirit, the Word, are we together? And what? The Father. And that all these three agree. Then when it comes to the earth, it says there are three witnesses. That means, no. Let, let's, let's, just, let's just forget about that. Let me just teach you what is my curriculum to teach you this night. And then we'll pray. The spirit, the water, and the blood. That means there is an information in what you are carrying. The Bible calls it a witness. When your body is dirty, you don't use oil. No matter what else you use, it takes water mysteriously to cleanse your body. Watch this. No matter what jam you put in water, no matter what dirt you put in water, the water is not intimidated. It can evaporate and leave the dirt there. Isn't this mysterious? That people who travel outside of space, scientists will tell you, they survive so long because they recycle every water there. Water is mysterious. It cannot be stained. You can never stain water with dirt. You can never stain water with germs. No matter what virus you put there, you just allow light on that water and it will rise and leave the trouble there. This is a mystery that many of you have not studied. So you drink water and then your thirst is quenched. Am I right on that? And then after a while, you go and use the toilet, you ease yourself and everything is gone. And all of a sudden you find out that there's a deluge of water coming from the sky again. I am telling you, you are not the first to drink the water. In fact, every water in your body is older than you. It had to be older than you to be formed. It had to be older than you to be born. Just use your mind. The church is a place of intelligence. Are we together? Wow. No wonder the devil can sit down and in the villages they will program all kinds of things in water. And all of a sudden, you find out that people's lives become a, all kinds of destructive things because of water. 
I'm not teaching you to go and idolize water. I'm just showing you that these five elements, they are mysterious elements that science has not even exhausted. Plants depend on it. Men depend on it. Everything on earth depends on water. Take away water from the earth and everything fails. Everything dries. There is something called drought, the absence of water within a predefined geographic area and it causes both men and animals to die. So the Bible says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high in the similitude of water, Isaiah 32 and verse 15, it says, then the, the wilderness that is bankrupt of water will be a fruitful field. Is that in your Bible? And a fruitful field will be counted for forest. So the spirit of God can come in the similitude of water. If I speak over your life and I say in the name of Jesus be blessed, you are hearing it, that's why you can say amen. It is true sound. Are we together now? This is very powerful. When you are about to eat and you say, Father, thank you for this food. That was the combination of light, the combination of the earth, the combination of fire. Am I right on that? The meal on your table, what and what led to it? It's the same elements we are talking about. That's why it nourishes you. What you are eating on your table is light, <laughs> fire, water. Listen, you are my people and I'm teaching you something about the power of God. Uh, I will not go somewhere and go and share that. I'm teaching you because I will still come back again to teach and clear your confusion. But I am telling you, if you ever see the supernatural manifest anywhere in the Bible, these five elements were present. So, I wish we had time, we would have checked all these five elements in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he says, now the earth was void and formless and the spirit of God hovered around the face of the, the face of the, the face of the, verse 2. And God said, let there be, you see light there? And there was light, verse 4 now. And he saw that the light was good and he divided the light from darkness, verse 5. And the light he called day, the darkness he called night. The evening and the morning were the first day, verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. This is God creating now. And let it divide the waters from the waters, verse 7. God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, verse 8. It says, and God called the firmament above heaven. The firmament in the earth, you know, that one he called seas and the rest. Verse 9, we'll find somewhere to pray. He said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place. He's still talking water and dry land. Say earth. Say earth. Are you seeing these elements now? And the dry land appeared and it was so. Verse 10. It says, and God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called sea. And God saw that it was good. When you read 11, you can read on and on. And God said, the earth that has now formed, now bring forth vegetation. The grass, the herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after it. And you can keep on like that, like that, like that. You keep seeing all of these manifestations. Every time the supernatural comes, it comes through these five conduits. They are mysterious elements. They do not belong to the earth. They were outsourced into the earth. That's why none, none of these five things experience death. Light does not die because it is not mortal. Hmm. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Sound does not die. Is that true? The earth does not die. Fire does not die. Water does not die. All five of these elements, death has no power over them. If they were earthbound and they were mortal, there would be a way of bringing them to an end. You can't bring light to an end. You can't bring sound to an end. 
No, you can only stop it from walking within a room. Demon spirits know this. Back again to our herbalist people as we round up. Every time you go to a herbalist, this is the same combination you see. Earth, water, light, then words are spoken. The words is still sound. It's just that unfortunately, this is, is a satanic thing that is done to... to you, are, are we getting the point now? It is not an invention of the herbalist. It is a manipulation of the laws of God. Now, today as believers, it is not necessary to speak to sound, to speak to water. Look at me. It is not necessary to speak to light. I'm not teaching you to do that. All of the powers that were invested in those elements have today been transferred and put in a name. Listen carefully now. Are we together? So the Bible says, Wherefore, God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names. It says that at the name of Jesus, now you will know what every knee must bow. The knee is not the knee of man. The knee is the knee of things. It's in your Bible. Of things in heaven, of things in the earth, of things under the earth. And then it says every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. That means the power that is in the name of Jesus, watch this, the power that God put in water, the power he put in fire, the power he put in light, all of these powers have now, they reside within the office of the Christ. When God gives you the name, he's giving you dominion over water, over fire, over elemental forces. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? So you do not need to go and fetch water or fetch fire or fetch all of these things. Now, I know there is a place of prophetic action, communion and water, whatever it is. I am not saying it's intrinsically wrong, but I'm saying as the believer today, understand when you see people use water and all of that, it is not that what they are doing is not correct. It is that there is a superior approach that is given to the believer now. Are we together? That all of that has been invested in the name of Jesus. So I do not need to go and consult with water and say, water, you have abundance. Give it to me. That abundance is in the name of Jesus. What I would have done before to now sit down and say, water, bring me abundance. Fire, bring me abundance. Light, bring me abundance. I can say in the name of Jesus, I speak to my destiny. Open up the power in the earth that makes it to yield will make my destiny yield because it's now been invested in the name of Jesus. Are you getting that now? It's important to understand this so that you will now understand what the Bible means by saying the sun shall not smite you by day. How does the sun smite you? Who uses light to smite you? Evil spirits. But because you have the name of Jesus, you can speak and say in the name of Jesus, no weapon fashioned against me, whether by light, whether by water, anybody who takes your name to a herbalist. You don't also need to go and carry water or fire. Now, I'm not pleased with all due respect to the body of Christ. Every man of God is at liberty to practice whatever revelation he has. I'm not by this. Let me put a disclaimer. I'm not insulting or downplaying or demeaning. No, 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 no. I'm teaching you the truth as superior revelations from the word of God. Are we together? I have acknowledged that these are elements that cre were created by God and that there is a dimension of God's power resident within them and that they are conduits for manifesting the supernatural. But the advantage that the believer has in Christ today is this name we have been given. Now you will respect what was put in the name of Jesus. So here's what he says, silver and gold I do not have. In other words, I can't tell you go and wash in Siloam. I can't tell you go and do this, but such as I have, give I unto you in the name of Jesus. The name that has that power. I will not need to say wait in Bethesda until the stirring of the water. When the angel came in John 5, he stirred the water and whoever entered the water was healed. 
Jesus himself put sand in someone's eyes. I don't need to go and start putting sand in people's eyes today to be healed. Are we together? All I need to do is to speak over your job, speak over your life, provided it is in the name of Jesus. I release that power. So, when I am walking my laws, learning all the laws that bring prosperity, when I bring the name of Jesus to those laws, I empower them to produce. On their own, there is a dimension of God's power. But now, added to it, I have said in the name of Jesus, whether you pray on the food you are eating or not, it already carries health within it. But now, I give thanks. Because there is a devil, there is an enemy who can also manipulate these spiritual laws. Listen to me, believers. The greatest investment you have for your victory is that name the power was invested in the name jesus went through all of these things and today we do not need to consult mediums or consult elements to get power the most superior approach for the believer is to understand the power that is in the name of jesus when i get up in the morning and i see the sun shine i know that is empowering plants and animals and all of that but listen to me even if i remain in darkness for one year i still will not die because there is a name are we together the effect of what that son would have done that name can do to me are we together now yes i do not need to go and bath seven times respectfully speaking like nah man except if it comes as a prophetic instruction from god but classically as i'm speaking to you that the believer's advantage today is in the name healing in the name prosperity in the name lifting in the name speed in the name even the communion that you take is in the name the communion itself does not have any power. It is the name that is invested in it that empowers it. Otherwise, you are just taking maybe a, a drink and all of that. The anointing oil that you hold, it came from a plant connected to the earth, connected to water, connected to light. The anointing oil on its own does not bring you any miracle except the name is invested on it. Is someone learning? So if I forget an anointing oil at home and say ah, i don't have an anointing oil don't worry did you forget the name that is the trouble many have carried the oil and forgotten the name mary carried water and forgot the name are we together now now i'm saying this to help the body of christ we're in the school of power listen when it has to do with power thank god for water thank god for light thank god for all of these things but the name of Jesus Christ has been exalted above everything and it's been given to the believer as an inheritance. When you have that name, with it you will command strange possibilities. And watch this, that name is able to manipulate even elemental forces to walk towards the favor of God's people. In other words, I can stand and speak over an atmosphere where there's drought and say rain in the name of jesus i declare you begin to fall on this land that rain will obey me why because i'm coming in the name of jesus jesus is not a creation he's not a creature he is the creator himself is somebody understanding what i taught you tonight god has all power now he's given joshua selman that power i will not go and stand in front of a river respectfully speaking to consult and say what will my destiny look like now i'm not insulting you if that is the pathway you choose that is fine but there is a more superior way that in the name of jesus i can say by the power of the holy spirit the holy ghost was given to me to lead me and guide me to understand the ways of god and i can walk in it and walk with exactitude and precision are we together now yes i can say in the name of jesus help us to find out the cure for this and that and God himself watch this can lead you to those elements now please hear me I need to balance this as we wrap up I am not teaching that engaging any of these elements in itself is sin the inventions that we get in our hospital is God leading men back to the trees to combine formulas that treat malaria that treat all of this are we together now yes there are times I've prayed for people on water. There are times I've prayed for people on their oil. 
There's there are times that people come by faith. They just hold a bag of sand and say, Apostle, pray on this sand. There's no time explaining anything to them. Their faith has been connected to it. I just lay my hands and say, in Jesus' name, go in peace. Because when they come and as they keep learning the ways of God, they will now see that there is a more superior approach. By this teaching, you should not go down and start insulting people and say, see what you are doing. You are still using oil and water and that. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. I will still use oil on you. I will still use whatever it is that God leads. But I am telling you that the power is not in the oil. Now, today, my confidence is not anointing oil. My confidence is not water. My confidence is not communion set. As wonderful as that is. Are we together now? Yes. My confidence is in the name of Jesus. If I lay my hands on that oil and you use it and it produces results, it is not because of the oil itself. It is because of the name of Jesus. Anybody who does not know Jesus will have to depend on those elements on their own and then sadly for many in partnership with demon spirits. Now, witchcraft operates in this manner. These spirits understand how to manipulate these formulas and they come and meet men. They say there is a cure for something in the village. Bow to me and I will show you the cure. So someone will come and bow to the devil and you say combine this leaf and combine that leaf. And the person will start doing it and start providing solution. And you'll be called the herbalist in the city and you'll make money from it. Like the lady with the spirit of divination. It brought money to their people. You would have called that prosperity. But when someone came in the name of Jesus, he said in the name of Jesus and he seized control of that. And an end came to that. Anybody who uses the sun, anybody who uses fire, anybody who uses water against you is only wasting their time. That only works if you do not understand the power in the name. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? With the name that you have, you do not fear manipulations of water, manipulations of this. So there can be water spirits, there can be demon spirits, there can be all kinds of spirits in the air, there can be manipulations with fire. But my confidence is that I'm coming in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what is conjured against me, that no enchantments against Jacob. I don't need to also go and start pouring water and drink. No, no, I've become an herbalist. That will even become an embarrassment to the authority of that name. How many people have the name here? When you come into Christ, among the many things that you are given is that name access to that name but it works by revelation it works by revelation watch this if a herbalist stands now and pours water in front of your compound and is shouting some some someone and pours water and throws it away you should not get afraid and say hey he even held water no remember what i've taught you they are playing with all these five elements but you have the name of Jesus. You have authority over that thing. Now, you know what happened that Benson Idahosa, I think he was, or one of these people, when they slaughtered an animal and kept it in front of him, they went and cooked it and, and ate it or so. If you use any of these elements, some of you go to your offices and you see blood, pepper, salt, all kinds of demonic things, and you panic and run away. No, remember, these are elements. And they are only as powerful as your ignorance allows them. Now the name of Jesus that he's given you, listen, with one command with authority. Now if you don't know what I have taught you and you are just shouting in Jesus' name, you will waste your time and that time will work. Let me tell you the truth. Many people have not got this revelation and they've just carried bold face for nothing and they died like chickens. The strength of the name of Jesus is not in pronouncing it like a chant is in the understanding. This is what gives us confidence. Hallelujah. I have held many charms with my hands. Many. Usually when people want to, when people are repenting or confessing, they carry all these charms that they got from several places. And I say, bring it to me. Because they don't know what to do with it. And they've warned them, if you keep it in your house, it will be the negative version of the act of, of God in the house of Obed-Edom. And so I said, bring it. I know what to do with it. Tear that nonsense into pieces and throw it away. I will not do that just by bold face. It will kill you. 
Listen, I'm saying this to you because I want you to walk out of this place knowing that I have power. As you obey the laws of the kingdom, expect it to work for you. The laws of prosperity, the law of honor, all of these laws. But in addition, know that I have the name of Jesus. And whatever spirit wants to manipulate my life and destiny, I can stand in the name of Jesus and speak that everybody who has used water against me, anybody who has used the sun against me, anybody who has used the earth to make pronouncement, I stand in the name of Jesus and I declare that it, the effect is nullified. That is the prayer we are going to pray for one minute. Can we pray that prayer for one minute? Rise up everybody. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every manipulation from the air, from fire, from water, from the earth against my life and my destiny in the name of Jesus, let it be nullified now. Open your mouth and pray in one minute. I come by a superior manifestation of power. Power over the earth. Power over elemental forces. Power over water. Power over trees. Power over the sun. Someone pray. They only walk to my advantage and not to my destruction. They only walk to my advantage and not to my destruction. They only walk to my advantage and not to my destruction. Hallelujah. Listen, please look at me. Give me a minute and we're done. Hear me. So the Bible says if they drink any deadly thing, is that in your Bible? that someone puts poison in water and say let him take it and die there is a covenant you have that you can even it's not about just avoiding to drink it whether you drink it that there is something the name does are we together yes the same way water separates itself from death and it can live you will be surprised that you are, it means water should not kill anybody. There are diseases called airborne, waterborne. You see, it ought not to be so because that air and water was created for the advantage of the believer, but manipulated by demons. I should not drink water and die. I should not eat food and die. They were not for my destruction. They were manipulated by the devil. No wonder the prophet said there is death in the pot. Today, right now, the devil has manipulated all kinds of foods. And now you almost don't know what to eat again. Because it looks like there is death in everything. Fear not. Walk within the advice of medical doctors. But can I tell you, shout the name of Jesus on that plate. And eat well. And go to bed. Are we together? Yes. I can go somewhere and get the water. I don't know who produced it. I don't know his covenant with the devil, but from the time it entered my house, loyalty changed. The bag of rice that comes to my house, I don't know who said it. In fact, if somebody prepares some, I'm saying this because there is so much fear in believers who prepared this, who put this, ah, I'm about to die. You are going to live a frustrated Christian life that way. It is the evil you know that you fight. What of the one you do not know? There are many believers who cannot do. It's out of fear. Somebody innocently can give you a wristwatch and say, uh-huh, you see, he gave me a wristwatch. This is a programming for delay. Please. Please. And you may be right. But what is the advantage of your presence? What is the advantage of the name? There are many restaurants that we may go and eat in. You don't know what the people believed. You can't sit in fear all the days of your life. Apostle, what if somebody wants to kill me? It's not what if. There is somebody on earth that wants to kill you. For sure. I can tell you that for free. Your immunity is in the name. Your immunity. This is a summary of my message. We're in the school of power. Your immunity 
is in the name that for as long as you stand in that name no divination and no enchantment and you can speak to elemental forces and i assure you by god that they will obey you give jesus a big hand clap <laughs> hallelujah let me make the altar call next time you go to visit somebody and he says what did you bring for me tell them i brought a name you mean you didn't bring even a bag of water? Now I'm saying, respect elders and carry all these things. But with it, add a name. And tell them, in the name of Jesus, I speak blessings upon this family. And walk away. By next week, they'll call you back and say, please speak again. Whatever you said last week started changing things. Are we together now? You are here and you've not given your heart to Jesus Christ. The name will not work for you. The name of the Lord is only for believers who are in Christ. And perhaps while you heard me teach, the Lord began to speak to you to say, make it right with Jesus. Our time is fast spent. Power, genuine power, resides only with an encounter with Jesus. The power that comes with laws and principles like you have learned is limited. I'm about to count one to five. I know that our time is fast spent, but for the sake of one person who wants to make it right with Jesus, I do not want this service to end without giving you that opportunity. Wherever you are, I want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand in front here. I begin my counting now. One, come. Come. God bless you. God bless you. These are not the only ones. Come. Gentlemen, make it right with Jesus. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Celebrate men and women who are about to have access to the name. The name that is above every other name. Above every other name. Above sicknesses and diseases. Hallelujah. If you are joining them, please come quickly. I want to lead them to pray right now. You are joining them, please come quickly. If you don't pray the prayer, you are not saved. Remember. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, say this after me. Lift your right hand. Let me request, please. Lift your right hand. God bless you. Thank you for the boldness to come. It's never too late to make it right with Jesus. Say this after me. Say it loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I come to you just as I am. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over me. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God saved by the blood of the lamb amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones the bible declares that as many who will come to him you will no wise despise and cast away i decree and declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven and tonight begins a new season in your life you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in jesus matchless name we pray Amen and amen. Please let me request that you move to my right, which will be your left. You have a word very quickly with the counselors, and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's give them a big, big hand clap. Hallelujah. Are you celebrating them? In the name of Jesus, I speak over your life that this name you have, you have found as an inheritance, let it work wonders this week. In the name of Jesus Christ. And like we have learned, anybody who tries to use elemental forces against you, they will see the superior power of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. By this prayer, every fear that you have, fear of men using things against you, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, it will not work. And where it has been working before now, that power is broken officially. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, go and prosper. In the name of Jesus, experience favor. In the name of Jesus, rise to the next level. 
in the name of Jesus experience restoration in the name of Jesus I call you victorious you are blessed in the city you are blessed in the country in the name of Jesus Christ elemental forces only work to your advantage in Jesus mighty name we pray after we share the grace, I'd like you to hug and greet someone and tell him you are blessed in the name of Jesus. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.